I think we're at a really important moment in the history of education. Uh, I, in 1992, this fellow, uh, Dr. Crossman from Pitt, showed me Gopher and said, Kyle, this is going to change everything. That was like the precursor to the internet, and sure enough, things changed in a big way. Well, now we have a new uh, surge in a whole bunch of different technologies. So I'm not just seeing digital badging as one thing, right, the silver bullet. I'm seeing digital badging as part of a perfect storm of things that, that coming together can really have a great impact. I'm saying that in a positive way on learning and teaching. And I'm no longer saying teaching and learning. I'm saying learning and teaching and impact. I think this is going to change things for the better. I think this is a turning point in the history of education. And you are there. A great moment that some people, you know, I, I'm referring to it as Renaissance version 2.0. I saw that, I didn't make that up, I saw that in an old Wired editorial, I can't find it to cite it, but this is, people are going to look back at this moment and say, wow, this is a point where lots of things changed in huge ways. You know, there's this growth curve, and things go along, kind of getting a little better, and then they get incrementally better, and incrementally better, and then they get exponentially better. And those growth curves that are happening in nanotechnology, and technology, and energy, and agriculture, and education, they are all kind of feeding each other. And we're at, a, we're at a really interesting moment here where what we do is about to change for the better uh, radically and for the foreseeable future. So many, in the meantime, we are writing this traditional system that is centuries old. Our degree is called, was called a sheepskin because that's how far back our processes go, where we actually printed the diploma on sheepskin. Right? And we've, used, we've got a lot of systems, a lot of parts of that system that we're just kind of operating with that may make sense to us, but they don't make sense given the context of the modern world. And some people are going to do it differently, and they're all of a sudden going to have all kinds of freedom and advantage that people will perceive very quickly. So I think we need to leave the old school thing behind and move to a system that makes a lot more sense. Bevan? So I think one of the things that's most exciting about this is that it's, it's an opportunity to rethink learning. This quote came from a, a fabulous paper on digital badges that's out there called What Counts as Learning. And it's a chance to think about what counts, how to recognize and make visible the learning that takes place anywhere, anytime, on any device. I mean, we learn so much outside of the classroom. We learn in, in various ways. And this is a way to sort of show that this can happen, that this does happen. Thank you. So the problem, one of the problems I see is in our, is in what counts in learning, how we understand what's, what students know and can do, and how we convey that to the world. So many important learning outcomes are smaller than courses and degrees. So we've been operating under this degree. Oh, you want an education? Boom, buy this. Here, Jack, it's a four-year program that really takes six years. And if you leave before then, you really don't have much to show, right? And inside that, we have smaller units that are only this big. They're 18 weeks long. And you can take one of these, too. Or you take a, you'll take a whole bunch of those. You take about 40 of those to get your bachelor's degree. And <clears throat> we're operating in these great big units in a time when there was one. <clears throat> I don't have the slide here because I had to cut it down. <clears throat> um, it talked about people aren't buying albums anymore. They're buying songs. And said, is that the future of education, too? Are they not going to be buying degrees? or even courses, degree is the box set, right? The course is the album, and the badge is the song, in my opinion, OK? And I, again, I didn't create that either. I should have it in here. By the way, I really want to thank Coyle for giving us a reasonable amount of time to talk about this. Usually, I have to squish things down. And <clears throat> I had to do some cutting, but not much. But that's one I should have really built in, because I took that much time anyway, right? <laughs> OK. so. Only, another problem is only colleges and universities can issue these degrees. Like somehow we got this ability to say, to issue the only, the only credentials that matter are ours today. So we have kind of a monopoly on the serious credential. That too is going to change. We use grades, right? What are grades? To me, if I hear grade, it's like grade A meat, right? You got a steak. It's done. It's grade A meat or eggs, right? A finished product that is not going to get any better. 
And it's really designed, our grade system is really designed to sort and separate people, to identify people, not really to help people learn. So we're using this system that's a competitive, graded system. And badging, believe it or not, can help change that too. Because badging kind of brings competency-based education in with it. It kind of ushers that in. So degrees and transcripts are also an incomplete picture of a person. So a person exists. A person, you're a lot more than your degree. And you have a lot more capabilities and things that could be described in transcripts of sorts, in credentials that can be combined to make a much better representation of who you are and what you know. So this is a piece of one of, our, one of my colleagues, uh, a former student. Well, he's still a student. Actually, hasn't graduated. This is Chris's transcript, Heather. <laughs> he knows it. Anyway, this is, this is what you see in a college transcript, right? IST 525. Okay, you probably know what it is, IST professor from CSCW. To somebody outside, what does that mean? Instance 594, research topics. At least I have two complete words, but I don't know what they learned or how, you know. I have a clue over here in the grade, which is blocked out, how well that person learned it, but just in a holistic, big picture, album sort of a way. And then is eval ed prog. Okay, that's, that's what I know about that person's semester. Incomplete, inexcusable. This is what a transcript looks like in the bigger world. And our colleague Kyle Bowen, who is, uh, I'm only the second most knowledgeable person about digital badges at Penn State named Kyle. Uh, Kyle Bowen is the real expert. He, this is something he did that I really love. He says, this is a transcript. <coughs> looks a lot like that. <laughs> I mean, think about it. What do you have here? You have an abbreviation. I think that's grumpy cat litter, but I'm not sure, okay? But it probably is. Bananas I get, okay. Top Gun DVD. It's even better in terms of knowing what I got. And then there's some code and then some information about, okay. <clears throat> this is, I called it old school. Other people are calling it sad and archaic. This comes from a paper and pencil era. If that, it comes, probably comes from an ink and quill era where we summarized grades and we didn't have machines to calculate. We couldn't track, we couldn't report. I mean, this is old, old, old school and inexcusable. <clears throat> so, in comes this new badging movement. Badges used to be just a cute little graphic, <clears throat> maybe with some words on it, that said archery or something. And, and by the way, I am a fan of scouting badges. I'm not putting down for scouting badges, but I'm saying that's what they used to be before digital. Digital badges are different. <clears throat> digital badges, digital badges are becoming digital, clickable representations <clears throat> of what people know and can do. That's huge. First of all, the graphics can be better, right? Second of all, the information is information behind them. You click it, and it reveals all kinds of information. It is a mini portfolio. Right? It is an e-portfolio that can be combined with other portfolios to give a representation of who you are in terms of academic knowledge, in terms of occupational skill, in terms of artistic capabilities, in terms of personality traits, in lots of different ways. So we now have a way to paint a much better picture that is uh, interrogatable, right? That you can go as deep as you want. If I want to know more about that leadership credential, I can click on it and go in and go in and go in and find out all kinds of information. It's a gateway to deeper information. The way the Mozilla Foundation shows it is they say there's this badge, but underneath the skin here, under the surface, there's all kinds of information. And that includes a badge description, the badge name, who gave you the badge, when they gave you the badge, what you had to do to earn the badge. Maybe even, there's a link they don't mention in this slide called um, evaluation. You can have a link to your rubrics that you use to measure things. You can have a link to the evidence. This is huge. So if, if this oral presentation was being evaluated, you know, it was, I was earning a badge for oral presentation, that, this presentation, that recording, could be available through a click on my oral presentations badge. I might choose a different one because I'm kind of huffing and puffing, and, you know, but I could, all right, you get the idea. Standards, too. If this is related to Common Core standards, Next Generation Science standards, ABET standards, any standards, if this is linked to a standard, you can include that in the badge. And then there are tags you can put in descriptors. There's also a layer that's about to be added to badges called endorsements, so that organizations can endorse 
other organizations' badges. So that like the American Education Research Association could endorse Penn State's qualitative research badges and so on. So at a click now, I have all that information. I can choose what to read. Some of that I can choose to go deeper and find out even more. This is huge. That's huge. Because it, it also is transparency. It produces this transparency. You know what I teach. See, my slide looks more like this. So there's metadata baked in here. So this is a, a, a badge that I used. So there's an issuer who issued it. By the way, when I did this, I, could, I wasn't saying this is a Penn State badge because I just wrote it. We'll talk about that later. Should I be able to say this is a Penn State badge just because I work for Penn State? Or should it be something that my colleagues and I agree on if I'm going to call it a Penn State badge? More on that later. Date issued, standard. That's, I made that up. This really isn't related to one of these standards. If I'd taken more time, I would have probably tied it to an ISTE standard, but criteria. So what did they actually have to do to earn my flipped classroom badge? They had to watch this video, that video, that video, that video, that video, read two articles, three articles, and then write a paper or blog post, and then develop a flipped classroom lesson plan, and then implement it and do some reflections, right? And those things then become part of the next Oh, then I can show you. Here's the rubric I used to assess the blog post. Here's the rubric I used to assess the lesson plan. And uh, yeah, rubric, rubric, rubric. So if you want to know how I even assess those, you can. And of course, the evidence. Here's a link to this person's uh, lesson plan. Here's a link to their blog post. Here's a link to, right? So now you know. And, and by the way, you might do a better job. Or you might not be yet, but you might say, what are these? And you might grab some of my resources and improve what you're doing. And I might hear that you do a better job than I do. Somebody likes your badge better than mine, so I might upgrade my work. So there'll be a, the transparency means that organizations are going to improve the quality of what they do. Learners win. Employers win. The institutions that take this seriously win. Anybody else, when people start doing this, some institutions do this and others don't, what does that say if you don't? What's the interpretation? How's that interpreted? Oh, they're not, they're not willing to show us. How much information can you find out about a course offered somewhere, let alone a degree? We're asking people to make life-changing decisions, to come for these huge things, buy this really expensive, multi-year thing with almost no information. This changes that. So badges can be used to motivate, right? They can be this carrot you dangle in front of people. Or they can be used to thank. This is more of a thank you badge than it is a motivator. But there, that's a bad thing in, in education when you have to dangle somebody. Come on, do this. You don't really want to do it, but I'll give you this if you do it. That's a problem. And research shows that when you do that, they may do it, but they're going to resent it. They're going to forget it. They're not, you haven't really built the, the affect that you want that's going to cause them to do more of that. So you can use that for motivation, but you can also use it. To me, it's a, a documentation of significant accomplishments. When I give somebody that badge, and a teacher walks into your office, Bob, and says, you know, I, I want a job. I've got these badges. I've got this flipped classroom badge. I've got, you know, this social media badge. I've got, you know, and you could name the ones that would value to you. And by the way, you could talk to me, and you could say, I'll hire all the teachers you you send me if they have this badge, this badge, this badge, and you need to fix this badge. All right, so now we have something to talk about as employer and preparer of future employees. Okay, they can also mark milestones. A lot of what we ask people to do is a long, arduous process, and it's good to have some markers that I'm getting there. Right now, at the end of one semester, you might get a couple of markers, but you're not really feeling the, the progress along the way, and if life happens and you can't finish the course, or life happens and you can't finish the degree, with badges you have these, these credentials that prove to somebody that you have knowledge and skills. That seems just fair, right? Otherwise, we're just withholding all the important credentials until they finish the whole thing. That's, I don't think that's blackmail, but it's, what is it? It's, it doesn't seem right. I wouldn't call it, I mean, is that right? That's not right. We need to give them the credentials Certify what they know as they learn it. Document learning, I think that's pretty obvious. What did they learn? Let's document that. So people say it's motivation. No, it's documentation of significant accomplishments. Badges, one of the things I like about badges is 
we as an academic institution have been, I'll say reluctant rather than afraid, to certify things like creativity, teamwork, leadership. Because, and by the way, employers care a lot about that. They care about those things, but because we can't measure them, we don't certify them. We don't test them. We don't grade people on those. We don't certify they have them. Well, a badge is kind of this new kind of credential that doesn't, isn't sort of equated to grades and measurement. And instead of saying, this person is creative, Payway, Payway is creative, I can say, I saw her do a very creative thing on this day, and here, here it is. And somebody else can say, I saw her do, Gary can say, I saw her do a creative thing another day. And she ends up with a portfolio of badges that describe her in terms of being creative. This is one example I use. I give out a wow badge every now and then when somebody blows me away. I send the Kyle Peck's wow badge out there. And if you look inside that, it just says, knocked my socks off. Very impressed. By the way, I bought that piece of art. It was just too good to, to not do it. Okay, so... There can also be this ongoing, lifelong portfolio of accomplishments. The ability to take badges from different places. The thing about this Mozilla standard, this backpack that gets created, the, the fact that there's a standard. So when we do badges, and Shippensburg does badges, and maybe Sloan or OLC does badges, or your local photography club does badges, or your astronomy club, or NASA or the Smithsonian, they all come out and operate in the same way. And they can be stacked side by side, and you click them, they all open up, and they reveal the data that they have to reveal. So this allows, it's not like a transcript, where you have that bad information, and you have to pay $3 or whatever it is now, $15. It used to be 3 when I got transcripts. That's how old I am. Anyway, it's not like compiling transcripts. It's like you can take the relevant pieces out and just display them right there with credentials. So descriptors of people, and this is what, Bob, you are always surprised to hear you, most people don't get the fact that ultimately these things might even be machine readable, right? And so inside these badges, especially if they're connected to standards or if they have certain endorsements or whatever, machines are going to be able to go out and say, find me people who have certifications in all these areas. And especially within an organization, you know, that, that's interesting, but outside. So this is something... Badges, I don't know enough about, I'm, I'm talking beyond what I really understand here. Ben Bevan will correct me maybe if, if I'm okay. too far off. Yep. But they're developed in JSON, which is a, I'm told by programmers, is a very readable kind of, machine readable kind of format that makes them uh, good candidates for sort of a machine understanding and uh, machine mechanical. You're good. Said enough? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> And it's possible to do the recommendation engine kind of thing with these. So I can say, hey, you just earned that badge. Other people who earned that badge also earned this badge. I can say other people like you, because once you have three badges, I can say other people like you. I can introduce you to somebody else who has those same three badges you do. And then social networking, kind of, you might follow that person. And every time that person cues a badge, you might get notified that there's a new badge. So there's a whole new viral kind of way that people might see these credentials. Suppose Penn State was first to do that. And people started signing up for these small, you know, maybe even non-credit. I say maybe because I don't think they need to be non-credit if we do evaluations well. Uh, opportunities to learn things. And other people started posting them and people would say, wow, I want one of those too. Boom, boom. And then people following them. You can post them to Facebook. No, you can't actually put your badge on Facebook, but I'll show you how you can put a post up that says, I just earned three new badges. And Facebook will come around. In the meantime, you can post them to LinkedIn. OK. I think I already went on how they can cause us to be more effective teachers and institutions. But one thing badging and competency-based learning does is it makes you define what you care about. Right? And it makes you communicate what you care about. And as an instructional designer, I'll tell you a little secret. Most of the reason instructional design works is because we tend to do that. We tend to figure out what we care about, tell the learners what we care about, and then hopefully measure what we care about. And when you do those things and allow them multiple opportunities to succeed, you're going to improve your success rate. So I think this badging can cause us to really 
do our jobs well and elevate the level of what we do, which will elevate the level of what other people do. So where did these badges come from? I'm going to let Bevan. She, she didn't, wasn't expecting to answer this slide, but she, she lives it, so I'll let her talk sure. to this slide. So uh, one of the things that, I mean, obviously the, the pace of technology is uh, it's, it's exponential, right? So uh, somebody who learned a programming skill 10, 15 years ago, those programming languages, some of them don't even exist anymore. And we have to learn them at a very, very rapid pace. Um, and in order to do that and get jobs doing it, we have to prove that we know these, this new language that may have come out less than a year ago. You can't go back to school and earn a degree in Node.js, which just came out a year ago. Nobody's doing it yet. So one of the things the faculty that senate is ready is meeting uh, can't meet till it's fall to approve that course. Right, yeah, right, right, exactly. So, so. one of the, the, the um, places where the technology technology companies started to step in, people who were early learners of these various technologies or, or actually helped to create them, started these uh, courses where pe people could learn Node.js, Ajax, all of these other technology languages. And then they would award a micro-credential, a badge, for learning those various pieces. And it's a really, really popular way um, now of actually um, learning new languages, hiring people that have those things. I mean, we look for, for those pieces. The other, the other um, thing that it, where place it's widely used, that we have a, a technology programming sort of community called Stack Overflow. And um, Stack Overflow is a place where uh, people help each other. And when you help each other to a certain degree, you also earn sort of this helpful status or badge for being helpful. Um, so it's another way of sort of recognizing that you have some expertise in, in that matter. We don't have to choose between degrees and badges, right? And so we right now, you have to take diversity courses, and you have to take quantification courses, and you have to take science courses. So in a way, we have those, you know, so two from column A, three from column B, that, that well-rounded thing built into a degree. So I think there's still value in degrees, but I think the degrees are going to be made by accumulating badges that are, right now, we sort of claim there's a secret sauce at the university. When you come out, you're a creative problem solver who can think and work in teams, and we claim that. But the the studies that look at look for that say, okay, well, if that's true, then seniors should be better than juniors, should be better than sophomores, should be better than freshmen. And when they measure those things, there's no difference. So we're, right now we're claiming that there's this secret sauce, this magic that happens when you're at university. And we all know a lot of magic happens at university, but not necessarily that magic. <laughs> and, um, and so if, if, we, if we took that seriously and said, here's a badge, so this communication requirement produces these kinds of things. And this diversity requirement has to produce these kinds of things. And you certify somebody who had that diversity enhancing aha experience and, and, and actually made a contribution that demonstrates that. Or maybe those things are not, they're more like the WOW badge I described. And Deakin University in Australia is using their undergraduate, um, I forget what they call them, their, their general ed categories like systems thinking, critical thinking, and you accumulate badges in those from multiple courses. So a systems thinking badge I might get in econ my economics class as I look at economics and how this affects that affects that. And then in my instructional design class I might get it when I think about how if I change that assessment, what are the impacts in terms of this, this, and that. And I might get another systems thinking badge in working for THON as I, you know, and I might get, so I might end up with saying, yeah, I'm a systems thinker, and I have these five pieces of evidence from five different domains, five different contexts that make the case for me as a systems thinker. No, no, we're not claiming magic happens. And now, will employers say, hey, I want you to go to Penn State because I know people come out of there with systems thinking, critical thinking, da, 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 da. So who's using digital badges? So are we way out there, are we crazy, is this a movement, is it like everybody's using them, or who's using them for what? What are some of the prime examples that we wanted to go through? With that, I turn it back to sure. Beth. Sure, and I'll try to use this properly. I always fail with these. Oh no, not so. today, <laughs> not today. 
So I've, I've labeled this slide a few potential cases, even though there are real live projects going on. And I've labeled it this way because some of these are end-to-end, -end, they're working already. Some of these are just getting started, and some of these extend out into a place of seeing them from what could happen from the future. So I've labeled them this way. There are four of them. The first that we're looking at, the first is pre-university. So high school students, elementary school students, people who are not, for whatever reason, at the university. We have existing college students, career placement services, so people leaving the, the stream of, of the university, and then how does, it, uh, how does it work in lifelong learning and where does it work in lifelong learning? So we've put together a few pr um, different scenarios. The first one, this is actually a project that's ongoing right now. Um, that a student who is in high school in a cities of learning, so they, there's a cities of learning effort at, uh, in a bunch of different cities, Pittsburgh, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, I can't remember where the other ones are, but they can offer digital badges. And we're starting to work with them to offer some Penn State badges potentially to their students. So a student who is really interested in digital literacy could earn a Penn State badge while they're there. While they're doing that, they're sort of accumulating these other badges, and they discover that there's sort of this learning pathway, like, wow, I'm really interested in media development or whatever. I could go get a degree in this. And they discover this sort of funneling or scaffolding into the, into the institution. They can earn those badges before they leave high school, and then they have a relationship with the university. Um, and they can continue to earn badges here. Then we've got current university students. Um, this is actually one that Kyle will talk about later, but perhaps they discovered that a universe, uh, badge can be earned. They participate in a summer abroad program, right? How do we recognize that currently? They could participate in this, um, submit additional reflection on the experience, the lessons that they've learned, and then it can open opportunities for them at the university as well as beyond. So maybe somebody who is, uh, summer, has had summer abroad experience may be chosen to have another experience because they've now got that sort of international um, learning, I guess. Career placement. So I looked at this from an employer's point of view. We have a, a couple of projects that are sort of eking into this area, but I look at it, especially from my point of view, I hire people. <clears throat> and I want to find a new employee with a, some, some prerequisite set of skills. Now, typically we'll look at people and say, oh, okay, they know I'm going to speak tech for a minute. They know JavaScript. They know back-end development. OK. But what I don't know is how many other things do they have that sort of lend themselves to fitting into my culture in my organization. So I can look at the individual portfolios that contain these badges. Eventually, this is where I start talking future here, I can look at a person and sort of see who they who they are, what their other interests are. So I can see that, oh wow, this person is really interested in horticulture. I'm going to call Larry out for a minute, this gardening thing that we keep talking about. And I'm doing this technology in this area. They don't have a formal degree in this. They know back-end development. They know front-end development. And they're really interested in gardening. Awesome. That's who I want to interview. Um, but then also, as an employer, I want to keep my employees' skills relevant. Right? So I want a place for them to go to keep learning things and keep, and keep being able to recognize it. Which leads us into lifelong learning. Um, so I will tell a little personal story here. My mother has never earned her college degree. However, she has been a student for my entire life. From before and after she has taken classes almost every year, she has taken almost every MOOC that has been offered on the face of the planet, I swear. Because wow. she I teaches me all that. about it when I talk to her on the phone. Um, you know, people are interested in continuing to learn in a variety of areas. And the MOOCs are a great way of sort of getting people that. But then if they don't finish the MOOC, if they don't get the digital um, certificate at the end, they have no way of showing that they learned all of these things. I mean, she has nothing. If she were to go into the workforce today, something would happen to my dad, she'd have no skills. I mean, she would have to, have to enter an entry-level job. So if I wish to maintain my skills to stay current or increase my skills to get a better job, this is a way to do it. I could use the Penn State digital badging system independently or con in conjunction with a MOOC. And we'll show you later why you can use it sort of discreetly as well. We've embedded some learning. Um, potential in there. I could find the badge marketplace, a place where there are a bunch of different badges that I could continue to learn, earn the badges in my chosen area, and share those out in a digital portfolio that I can send to employers um, 
potential employers or to my mom to say, hey, mom, I'm still learning. So those are the four scenarios that, that we're really focusing on as we go, we go through. And I know you guys all have really, really great ideas um, that may or may not fit into these, these areas. So other, other uh, examples we wanted you to think about or to be aware of are uh, following, as follows. So one is uh, uh, the Coastal Carolina University. Just about, I guess it was two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I uh, learned of this one. It's uh, really aimed at sort of undergraduate writing. Okay, so this is Coastal Carolina University's badging program. It's pretty plain vanilla, but they have, they have a video here. They, they made themselves to explain it. Uh, they talk about digital badges. How am I being graded? They explain all that. But then in, if you look at the badges, they have badges for uh, their 101 composition course and 102. I want to go in and show you like an example of how you take a course and break it down into badges. So they have this paragraphing, paraphrasing, quoting, shaping a thesis, shifting style, summarizing, uh, you know, wordsmithing. In 102, you get into analyzing, critiquing, imagining readers, paraphrasing too, reading. I want to take you into one of these. I, I, I've went, been into a couple of them, and they all look about pretty much the same and really good. So you go to the required steps, critiquing. So they have a let's get started. <laughs> they sort of explain this. So it's pretty much self-contained. The kind of content that she has in her lecture. How do we begin? Six questions to think about as you summarize. An example, then they have them think about this one case. And then they go to the assignment. So part one, read this short article by Clay Shirky. And then in about 250, 300 words, following your summary, compose an original critique of the argument. Attach your document PDF is preferred. Using the choose file button, choose your professor's name from the drop down menu and click submit. Back to this next example. Uh, by the way, I'm headed down uh, there soon and I'm going to try and look them up because I think that's a pretty, I want to talk to them more about how it's being received. They did a thing for on the open badges uh, community call on Wednesdays that was, uh, was quite good and well received. So then another example and these guys have been in operation for a couple of years now using these ed tech open badges and this is for future teachers. So if you go back here, um, so if we go show off your ed tech badge uh, how we use badges, why badges, what are badges, how does it work, how, what badges are offered. Um, if you go here to the browse section, they have uh, different categories of badges that show up. So they have collaborative media badges, and, and you can see some of the things, fitness tracking, inspiration, mind mapping, online presentations, poll everywhere, all those. Then down here you can look at exploration tools, and the exploration tools I guess showed up above there. Uh, so they have all these different tools that they think people want to know about, and they can earn badges in each of these. So if a teacher, if you were trying to hire a tech-savvy teacher and teachers came to you with, uh, you know, virtual chem lab, lab badges, media production, online collaboration and networking, I don't know what the Ubersense badge is, but it looks, it's, it allows you to re record, review, and critique athletic performance. So they just, every technology tool they think teachers want to know, they're badging. And they said, by the way, they're, they're, they said they would share their rubrics, they would share their badges. Because I talked to them afterward, after a conference a couple of years ago and said, it's a shame open badges aren't really open in that people allow you to sort of use your tools. And they said, oh, we will. No problem. Next one I wanted to show you is uh, University of California, Davis. Uh, they have a badging system that helps students develop skills, apparently. Groundbreaking uh, digital badge system for sustainable agriculture. So you get into sustainable agricultural and foods, uh, agriculture and food systems major. Uh, they have contact information. These are some of the things that they badge. Student learning outcomes, systems thinking, experimentation, inquiry, interpersonal communication, understanding values, strategic management, civic engagement, uh, personal development. They sort of explain them talk about their curriculum design. Here's some of their, uh, an overview. So they have these categories of badges across the top and then other badges. So this is like the communications badge or whatever. He's, this is a slide he had. So this is a strategic management page uh, where it says students work collectively to design and implement interventions, anticipating future scenarios and adaptively managing information, human and natural resources for maximum impact. 
And then they, I assume they break that down and have activities. There's, they're not really sharing their secret sauce with you. I can't go in like I could Coastal Carolina and see what they actually ask people to do and see how they prepare them to do that. The Smithsonian Institution is also using digital badges with younger students. And they have these things they call quests that allow them to engage with online resources. And uh, they've done a really nice uh, job of bringing those together. Here's the list of their, is that big enough to see? Some of the badges they offer, you know, they cover, <laughs> they cover a lot of ground. So you've got historical biographers, symbi symbiosis spotter, dirt detective, arts advocate, enviro scientist, culture keeper, eco journalist, more, more, more. All things that have them interacting with Smithsonian online resources. Colorado State University is also using digital badges, uh, and their programs are the, an actual gardener program as well as sustainability. So they have uh, a nice set of badges there. Uh, Skill-based badges. But they do a nice job too of explaining how digital badges work. Uh, how do I use digital badges? So one of the things I liked about their system is they have this hierarchy. We're going to talk in a moment about hierarchies and taxonomies of badges. So they have trek badges, which are building blocks for quest badges, which are building blocks for mastery badge, right? So we 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 use terms called a meta badge sometimes, which is a badge that consists of other badges, right? And they have three layers here. So these Trek badges, you earn a certain number of Trek badges. You earn all the Trek badges in a quest, and you get a quest badge. You earn all the quest badges in, a, in an area, and you get a mastery badge of that area. So that's kind of a nice thing, because one of the problems that you, you have to think about is, are all badges the same? And they look the same. How do I make one badge worth more than another badge? I thought that was a really good way to go. And then they have this kind of. Uh, you know, arrangement here. This is the gardening one. So CSU Extension Gardener Badge is a tree care. So this would be like a mastery badge. This would be like a, which was tre tre quest badge, and these would be trek badges. This one's tree care. This one's like handling the bugs, hang, handling the wigg wigglies, pruning, and this was like, I think, fertilization and whatever. But so you earn those three things about tree care, you get the tree care badge. You earn some other, th other pieces, and you would get that uh, gardener badge. Kind of like degrees, courses, classes, topics, that sort of thing. Another thing I liked is this, you know, they had this as one of the pieces they had. What are digital badges? How do they work? They're a new way to, to earn credentials and prove your competencies for employers. Digital badge is a symbol of expertise and accomplishment that you can share on your resume, social media, among your personal networks. So they're using digital badging. They're absolutely using it as a marketing tool. If you go to their website, you'll see they're saying, we sh you should come here because we have this rigorous curriculum, and we're going to the help you prove to the world that you're the one they want to hire. And then they have link out, too, to digital badging, learn more about digital badging elsewhere. The last university example I'm going to show you right now is our own. This is something that's coming out of Penn State. So they're doing a liberal arts citizen uh, badge. It's not really tied directly to courses. It's sort of like these are things that a good liberal arts citizen should have. And they're offering their majors the opportunity to earn badges in each of these four areas. Global perspective, initiative, leadership, and engagement. And they, in each of those, they have, like in global perspective, they have a globalist badge that is the equivalent of that quest badge that would be added. And these would be the Trek badges, right? So you have this, this liberal arts citizen meta badge, biggest badge, whatever they call their, their biggest one, mastery badge. And one of these would be the global perspective badge. That would be their quest level. And then global, the globalist, culturalist, and traveler. And they have requirements for what you have to do for each of those. Bevan said I was going to refer back to semester abroad. And I wasn't, but I'm going to now oh, just sorry. because she said. So this traveler badge, you know, one of the ways you can earn that badge is through a semester abroad. Whew, got that. Wow. <laughs> I, I want to live up to Bevan's expectations, and I, I had a risk there. And Bevan inserted this quote. You want to go through this one, Bevan? So this is a, a quote from Bill Clinton, um, who became interested in badges um, because of his concern about the unemployment rate of, of, among military vet veterans. And I won't read it to you because it's a long quote. You can find it out there. But I, I think that's one of the things that, um, as we talk about prior learning assessment, this is a key place. These people come back with all these skills. They can run multi-million dollar pieces of equipment. And then we say you have to sit next to an 18-year-old in an English class. You know, um, So this would be a way uh, to help 
them continue to move forward. And he sees them as, as important, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. That's <laughs> so Arne Duncan, the Secretary of Education, is for badges. He spoke at the, the uh, MacArthur Mozilla kickoff for badges. Uh, uh, Bolden, the administrator of NASA, is for digital badges. Manufacturing associations, a lot, there's a lot of momentum behind it. And I'm going to have to go through this a little, rest a little more quickly to get there. But So I think justice, fairness, and then Penn State's priorities. President Barron says, and, and, and President Obama says, and our constituents say, we need to reduce the cost of college. And we need to reduce the time to completion of degree. So what if we co had competencies and allowed people to pay us to assess it a smaller fee, and by the way, we do. At the undergraduate level, we have, a, we have a policy for credit by examination. And I think the cost is like $90 to sit for an exam that would be the equivalent of a three credit course. And we have a, we have a policy for credit by portfolio at the undergraduate level, not at the graduate level. I won't go there. But at, for about $240, I think it is, you can submit a portfolio for up to six credits for review for worth up to six credits. So now if we let people learn these things on their own and with peer support, think MOOCs, think, think digital badges placed into a MOOC space <clears throat> so they can just grab the ones they need. And think when we place the badge in the MOOC space, we're just placing a link in the MOOC space that takes them into our badging engine. Right? So the course becomes you know, an overview. Like Amazon, you see the first paragraphs, click here to see more. They click here to see more, they're inside our badging engine. And they register for badge when they submit. There's, there'll be fees for some of these because the cost, the cost of education, is really the cost of the human interaction and the evaluation, and the certification, the maintenance of the records, and those kinds of things, uh, increasingly. So it, badging has the potential to do these things. Transparency, as I mentioned, granularity, flexibility to put them together, and I think all that adds up to competitive advantage. If we do that and others don't, we're there. We have an advantage. I think, as I mentioned, these three things are a natural fit. They go together. They make sense. Competency-based learning is not a new thing. It comes back over and over again because it makes sense. And it gets beat down because, you know, the monopoly that people have, they don't have to, don't have to do it. It's a lot of work. We don't have to do it. Well, guess what? In this perfect storm, we will have to do it. And we will do it, and some will win. There's my boom, Michelle, right there. So, yeah. We're thinking the same way. All right, so there's a lot out there on that. A lot of people are using it. I used to start with this one, the, the MacArthur Foundation Digital Badges. Purdue University integrated a badging system with their LMS about their course management system about two years ago. They were ahead of us. We're about to eclipse them. Uh, when ours, we're going to be, we're going to have the best. But for now, they're it. Smithsonian Quest, NASA, we did things for them. There, it's gotten a lot of press out there <coughs> saying things like. Could significantly impact education. Um, David Wiley, my, my friend, who now left to really pursue the open education thing for a long time, proposed on his blog uh, a project called Or Equivalent. People, people hire people saying, I want a bachelor's degree or equivalent. Well, let's, let's sit down, Google and you know, some other companies, and say, what do you mean by Or Equivalent? What is the equivalent? And let's write some badges for that, and let's figure out Ways, you know, organizations that will assess them and lets people ha let people have an equivalent way to demonstrate that they have the equivalent. I loved it. He was busy and that didn't happen, but yeah. There's also one called Disrupting the Diploma. This guy, Reed Hoffman, is the, the driving force behind LinkedIn. And so he wrote one called Disrupting the Diploma, where he pointed out the sheepskin and how archaic our, our systems are. So here's a question for us to think about. How do we assess Badges. So I, you have Kyle Peck's WOW badge. That's pretty obvious. That's not to be taken seriously just by the artwork and layout. But you can have a badge that looks serious and isn't. Is that a problem? Everybody says, wait a minute, wait a minute. So already I get, when I get cover letters and resumes, it's all I can do to go through cover letters and resumes. Now people are going to have badges. How many badges are they going to have? Are they going to have do a dozen badges? I'm going, no, it's going to be like, they're going to have hundreds of badges, right? Not a dozen. Well, how do, how am I, how do you, Come on. And I say, well, so that's one perspective. On the other side of the room, there's a human resource person that says, hiring is the most important thing we do. Of course I want badges. It gives me the ability to hire people. You know how many times I hire and rehire somebody? How many times I have to go through that stack of resumes? No, I want good information so I can make that decision right the first time. 
Back to machines should be able to read badges and people should be able to sort their own badges. So if I say I'm hiring this person and I want to see cultural diversity and I want to see you be able to drive a forklift and I want to see you be a team member, then you should show me a badge for teamwork, for diversity, and for forklift driving. And I should be able to just search some of these big job placement sites and say, give me somebody with those three capabilities. And then, and you've got a cooking, you've got a, you can dice garlic too. Oh, that's it's good. Really important skill. No, right, something <laughs> like that. But, but that rolls up into, oh, you're a master gardener. That counts for something in my book. Those other intangibles, it tells you about people. So, and if you want to know whether a badge is serious, you click it. Boom, how hard is that? All right, is this a teamwork badge? Is there anything there? Boom, oh. I see how that was assessed. Wow, I see what they had to do for that. That's, a, that's, you know, that's good. You know, so it doesn't take long to figure out whether a badge is frivolous or not.